nice, man. It's dope. Some people are trying to break in and steal some files. You're like, not today. <laughs> So I had my first headlining weekend at a club in San Diego called Madhouse Comedy Club, and here's what happened. So, <laughs> I don't even know where to start. I've been going to San Diego for a long time to do shows. Um, I had someone refer me to Madhouse Comedy Club maybe four or five years ago, and I went and had a great time, and I kind of just didn't stop going. And San Diego has such an amazing stage time that I just, I just, I, I go more, I go to San Diego and have gone to San Diego more than I'd say 95% of the comics in LA. You know, when you're not famous in LA, getting good stage time is really hard. And the open mics are absolutely brutal. So you kind of got to get creative with stage time. And the route I took was driving to San Diego all the time. There was one month I did it like once a week. And for those of you who don't live in California, you know, that it's it's about a normally, I'd say no traffic, two hours. Uh, traffic on a Friday, three and a half hours. It's taken me four hours. It's it's a brutal drive. So I've really sacrificed like my, my lower back and my fucking car for great stage time. And I, I have zero regrets about it because I, I feel like I've really grown as a comic. Thanks to the shows there, the comics, the... Just the whole environment, man. It's been it's been so great, and it's such a perfect place to have my first headlining weekend. So last time I, I did Madhouse, which they they normally do weekend shows. They do uh, four shows: two Friday, two Saturday. And I'd say back in uh, I want to say back in like February, early February, I think I did like the normal spots on the show. I did like like ten minute spots on the show and and after i and it was it, it, talks of me headlining were already kind of surfacing but there was an there was kind of a question of like what would my credits be because to get people out to shows you, you know a lot of clubs are like you've seen this guy on comedy central you've seen him on amazon but for me i don't have those legit credits i just have the social media following which in my opinion holds more weight a little controversial but I'm, I'm saying you know who do you think will sell more tickets a guy who was on conan 15 years ago once or a guy who has you know 40,000 followers on x social media I, I don't know maybe I'm wrong but I just feel like there's such there's such a value with social media now that people that some club owners don't totally get it but the ones who do props because that's what's up you get it and this is one of those clubs the owner eventually I think came around on the idea of me headlining just off of the social media stuff and when I got off stage back in February he came up to me and said hey I want you to headline the weekend. Here's two dates. Pick from them. So it was really nice. It was very rewarding because it was like right after I got off stage with a great set, the owner was like, hey, I want you to headline. It was like out of the movies. I was like, all right, let's do it. it felt like fucking Elvis or something. Uh, weird analogy. I think I just watched the trailer for that Elvis movie. I think that's why that came to mind. Um, anyways, going into the weekend, uh, I knew exactly pretty much what to expect for the most part. Um, Normally when you headline a weekend, you do, at a comedy club, you do like a 45-minute set, you know, 45 to an hour. But at Madhouse, they, they it's more of a showcase show, so they put up like five or six comics doing 10 minutes, and then the headliner, who does about 25 minutes. So I already knew going into 25 minutes was what I, I should expect. And also, uh, I had the, 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 the ticket link on my website, and... I stopped promoting like local shows and all of my shows because I want to save up these people for when I actually have my own shows. Like I stopped promoting, you know, random bar shows I have in LA or, 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 or opening for people because I want to save these people so they can come out and see me when I headline and it's my show as opposed to promoting for a venue that's maybe not paying me or it's a weird show or I'm opening for someone else so so they're reaping the benefits. I'd rather save these promotions for when I really need them. Um, and so this is kind of one of those times where I decided to promote this as a thing just to see what happened. And I only had the option of giving the link to their calendar or like one of the shows. So I just picked Friday early show as the one to like have the ticket link go to, if that makes sense. And... About a week before I went, I saw and like a bunch of the a bunch of the tickets were sold out. Like everything except the general admission was sold out. Any reserved seats all sold out on that show specifically. No other shows, which is the one I had linked. So in my head, I'm like, "Is your boy selling tickets? 
Like, what's happening? Is there some birthday party that happened to buy all the tickets up? Like, who didn't care about me? Are these my people? Am I a guy who's selling tickets now? I have no, I have no idea. So I went into the first show thinking like, yo, this first one's going to be crazy because I think I have a lot of people out to see me. That's what I went thought going into it, right? I had my set and I was, it was like, my goal was to come out first show and just crush, get a good first impression, have a great set. Um, and I did. I had a very, very, very good set on the early show. Um, I ended up going long. I probably did 27, 28 minutes, which is on purpose because I, I wanted to go a little long just because you can because you're the headliner. You can do kind of, you have so much more liberties. You're not cutting in anyone's time. It's your show at that point. I got some great crowd work moments. Uh, here's some of them now. Nice. What's your name, man? Mike. Nice to meet you, Mike. What do you, uh, you have a nice white shirt on. It's a nice, you're going to just come from like a prom or something? That's a nice white, like post-prom comedy show. Is that how they do things now? I don't really know. Do you have a job, Mike? What's, uh, what are you for? You fight helicopters? Wow. Okay, I'm shit. Never mind, Mike. I didn't talk shit. Nice of a mic. Cuts me after the show. Bye, guys. <laughs> Just hanging on to the thing. Oh, this is great. So wait, you fly helicopters for a, for a living? Like for a job? Oh, you guys both do it. Nice, man. Do you guys do it like in the same helicopter? <laughs> I don't know how a helicopter it works. <laughs> Two sticks. Yeah. Two sticks. <laughs> yeah, I definitely get it, man. Oh. <laughs> Do you guys fly helicopters or just shoot gay porn? I don't know what you guys actually do. <laughs> two flying, two sticks, two guys, three asses. <laughs> no chicks. <laughs> What's the name of the, uh, like the helicopter company? The Navy. The Navy? thing was such a gift i mean that shit people were quoting that like the, the whole weekend <laughs> where do you work the navy like what a moment that was man i love this shit so after the show so i felt really good about it and then after the show i wanted to stand like in uh, where, where people are leaving so you can talk to them and i was standing there kind of expecting that people were going to want to come up to me and say hi maybe take pictures and just you know because i really thought those sold out seats were there to see me I'm standing there, and dude, I'm not kidding. I don't think one person on the show knew who I was. <laughs> it was like such a reality check. I was so wrong. Like, people obviously were coming up and being like, great job, blah, blah, blah. I took a few pictures, but it was all people that learned about me from that show. These were not fans. Maybe they're new fans, but these are not old fans. So it was a very funny moment for me to be like, all right, let me talk to my fans. Let me talk to the people. And it was just like... Hi. Hey, thank you. 
yeah, I'm the, I was the guy. Yeah, no, I was the guy. You know, it was just such a funny reality check. And I didn't care. I mean, it's, it, you know, I feel like some people will be like, man, why did anyone come out to see me? I'm like, I don't care. I, I was so happy with my set that I was like, that's what matters. My game plan going into this is that I really wanted to do different sets on the shows. So like early show, I had my one set. And then late show, I did 20 minutes and I wanted to do a different set. I wanted to keep a couple of the same things, but I wanted to do about a 60 to 70 percent different for two reasons. The main reason I wanted to do that, well, I'll tell you, the second reason I wanted to do that is basically to try out some newer jokes, see how they're doing. The late show, normally a little, normally a little bit slower, so it's not as high stakes. So I'm kind of like, yeah, throw in some new stuff, see how it works. But the main reason is that I feel like if you do the same set every show on a weekend like this, the comics, the staff, they're just going to be like, oh, he, he's he's good. He's doing great. But he's got one set. He's got a good 25 minutes. And I know I don't. I have more material than that. So I kind of wanted to prove to them that I'm, I don't know, prove to them, prove to myself that I, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm a great comic. I'm a headliner. What, look at this other set. Look at this other, I, I, got, I got more stuff. And uh, so that made me feel good. And, you know, I didn't have as, as good of a set as the early show, but it still was great. And the crowd, it was packed. I thought Friday Late was going to be rough, but it was great. The crowd was awesome. You look too real cool, man. Also, what's, the, what's your uh, necklace right there? Is that a sh uh, like a hook? Oh, fish hook. Nice, man. So I get that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, bro, a couple of fishing mean guys right here, baby. <laughs> Just had a great time. A couple of the newer jokes didn't land super, super hard. Everything worked, but you can you can just tell like what the newer stuff is. And what was weird though is when I was in uh, I was in San Francisco, uh, you know, the week before San Diego, and I, I felt myself getting kind of sick, but I never really got sick. I had like a weird, like a goofy throat, and you were like, hmm, something's up. Just never got sick. But then I kind of started having this cough, and I realized that after the first show, I I, I felt like I was losing my voice. To a point where, where where Kaylee came with me and she was like, "Don't hey stop talking," in between. <coughs> she was like, "Stop talking in between shows. You're gonna lose your voice even worse." So this is something I never had to deal with. And uh, and after the second show, Friday, I was my voice was legit like hurting. It was like a struggle to be to it would, like my voice hurt, even though I was just doing these 25 minute sets, dude. It was it was still like whoa. Um, so that was that was a new experience, and then uh, yeah, that night uh, I, I tried to just not talk for the rest of the night, and it was very hard, especially at a comedy club where you know everyone. How do you not talk to people? It was like impossible. I also I had to I basically had to tell people, hey, I don't want to talk right now. I'm losing my voice. I'm not an asshole. I just I'm I I I. I uh, uh. So Saturday comes along. Um, I want to do the same game plan of doing two different sets. Um, but I kind of wanted to do have the late show be a little bit stronger um, than the Friday late show just because, I don't know, I wanted to, you know, you could you could feel the difference. So I still wanted, if, even if they're going to be different sets, I still wanted both to be very strong. Not a ton of new stuff in there, if that makes sense. Early show Saturday was unbelievable. That was, I know I said this on the Tempe vlog, I was like, I'm having some of the best sets I've ever had. And I stand by that, but man, this Saturday early show was unbelievable. That was easily one of the best sets I've had in my life. I mean, it was just everything came together. The material was great. The crowd work moments were crazy. 
I, I don't think I've ever felt like more of a headliner than I did on that show. I mean, I felt like so confident, so good. Like it, I, even just doing crowd work very casually, I felt this new level of comfort and just pacing that I, it was just this weird, like maybe because I'm so comfortable in that room, I've done it for so long, but it was something about it, man. It everything clicked on that show. How are you guys doing? You guys having a good time? Oh, Is that soup? You guess, it was? You guys got soup at a comedy show? Fucking rock on, baby. Yeah, baby. You guys ready to party? What's up, bro? Fuck yeah, man. What's your name, sir? Eric. Eric. Nice to meet you, Eric. Appreciate you coming out, man. Getting that front row soup action, baby. Let's go. Love it. What do you do for work, Eric? Cybersecurity director. You're a cybersecurity director? Okay, I'll see you, Eric. You can afford soup, that's for sure. <laughs> what do you provide cybersecurity for? I got hospital systems. Hospital systems, nice, man. It's dope. Some people are trying to break in and steal some files. You're like, not today. <laughs> Like I said, Lady, are you guys together here? No, not together. Okay, what's the relationship? I'm sorry for assuming that. Oh, friends. Okay, my bad. For now. <laughs> Maybe on the way home, you'll be like, that Will Burkhart was pretty funny. And she was like, I thought so too. <laughs> I'm not saying I'm a matchmaker, but like, you're welcome. <laughs> You guys look like you're together. You have the arm around her, hands clasped. It'd be funny if you're like, nah, this is my sister. It's <laughs> like, not understanding anyone. All right. How long have you guys been together for? You're not together? Okay. You look pretty fucking together. They say her hands is cute as shit. You look like they're skipping through the woods right now. What's the, what do you mean? What's the relationship here? You're visiting. His penis? Or like, what are you? <laughs> like, no, I'm just visiting. <laughs> then Late Show comes along, uh, and at this point, we haven't had a bad crowd. Everyone on the shows has been doing well, and like, re really, there hasn't been a bad crowd until the Late Show Saturday. Finally. We had a weird crowd. And, you know, since I go last, I can hear everyone, uh, you know, their sets. And, and, and yeah, people are struggling. Good comics on the show are kind of struggling a little bit. You can really hear the difference. And some of them are even like, oh, you guys are a weird crowd, huh? And I'm like, oh, boy. I went up, and you felt it pretty quickly. There's a few moments that I was like, oof, all right. But still had a great set. Still had fun moments. Dave, what do you, uh, what do, you do for work, man? IT, nice man, what do you do IT for? Uh, biotech. biotech company. Cool, man. <laughs> so tight. <laughs> biotech, man, I definitely know what that is. <laughs> Yo, we got the bio, we got the tech, we're gonna put them together, you know? <laughs> I feel you, bro. We're the same guy, you know what I'm saying? I love bio, man, and I like tech too, so like, because bio's like, yeah, people, and then tech's like, Xbox, and you fucking, you know, like. <laughs> how would you, how would you describe, okay, treat me like I'm really dumb. How would, how would you describe biotech to someone? You make drugs? Come on. Anyways, uh, get off stage. They uh, they already offered me another headlining weekend in July, so you you can't ask for more than that. And I, I really couldn't have asked for more from a first uh, first headlining weekend. Um, it was such a perfect club, perfect opportunity, 
I felt so ready for it. Um, it was a great test. Um, granted, you know, it, it, when you feature on the road, you do the 20 minute sets, you know, twice a night. So it didn't feel like that new of an experience because I'm pretty used to featuring, but it was just a nice thing of like, hey man, you're the headliner. Like you're the guy. You got to go and close out this show. Um, you know, you got to deal with the check drop, which not a lot of people know about that. At a certain point during the show, during the headliner set with about, I'd say 20 minutes, 15 minutes left in his set, the waitresses give everyone their checks. It's called the check drop. And we know when the check drop happens, people immediately go, ha ha ha. Okay, so what do you owe? Do I owe? Can you, wait, did you get the pineapple spritzer? Did you get the pineapple spritzer? Well, we, yeah, but it's double the price. Why couldn't you have just gotten a club soda? You needed the pineapple spritzer? So you're, they're going through all this and I'm on stage like, <laughs> right? And they're like, yeah, one second. Can you Venmo me for the, Bobby, can you Venmo me for the thing? But when you're the headliner though, you got you take that shit on. So good experience dealing with that as always. And um, it was just great, man. It was so fun. I had such a great time. If anyone watching this happened to be at those shows, which don't think they were, I appreciate you for coming out. Um, I'm going to be back there as of now. I think it's July 8th and 9th. So any San Diego people, watch out for that. And I'm doing a one-night headlining show in Boston, June 16th. It's a Thursday. Uh, the ticket link is in my website and in the description here. So, um, yeah, man, here's to more headlining sets. Here's to me getting those those longer sets, uh, those reps in. And uh just going to continue to grow this thing, man. So thank you for watching. Subscribe to my shit if you haven't. So that was so, I felt like an asshole the way I said that. P please subscribe because it helps me a lot. And uh, comment too, say what's up. And until then, I'll see you uh, I'll see you next time. Thank you again for watching. I, it does mean a lot. So thank you. Uh, 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 uh,